introducing my friend and mentor Tom Madden on the wall here at the offices of Transmedia Group Public Relations Firm in Boca Raton. Tom was vice president of NBC TV in New York, and now he's a stellar publicist and public relations man. He's the, the famous spin man you all hear about. And so he's been a friend of mine and a mentor and a public relations uh, rep for my books and projects, even while I was incarcerated. And I know a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what made a difference in my incarceration to turn my life around. So here I am in his offices and I will let Tom tell you for himself how we came to meet. So Tom, welcome to my humble show here. Okay, and welcome to my uh, humble office here. There you go. Uh, Tom uh, was gonna share with us uh, how he and I met and a little bit first about his background from his own mouth. Okay. Well, first uh, I wanna, I wanna commend and congratulate Bill <clears throat> on his really conquering all the things that he had to get through to, to be here. And he's an inspiration, uh, really, when you think about it, because, you know, Bill had, had a terrible beginning of his life and went in all the wrong directions. But, you know, but he's paid for all of that heavily, you know, spending many years in, incarcerated. But what did he do when he was incarcerated? He didn't just sit there and feel sorry for himself. He actually took courses, college courses. He learned to become a writer. He wrote a book while he was incarcerated. He helped other prisoners. I mean, he was, the man has changed his life so wonderfully that he's such an inspiration that you can change. And, and we need to reward change because uh, it's something to really admire if somebody can totally change the direction of their life as Bill has. And the books he's writing are very insightful about others who have serious problems. And Bill has x-rayed them and looked into their lives from his point of view. And he's a marvelous writer and a very insightful guy. So I'm happy he's back with us and about to star in his own TV series, which is amazing, uh, on AD Network, and I, I'm so proud of him, and we're all so proud of him. And uh, and I think that this is only the beginning. You're going to hear a lot about William Steele. Well, Tom, I certainly appreciate that, and you know you're quite the uh, quite the character in public relations. You're awesome to get people pl tons of publicity and attention. Uh, Tell us a little, a little more about your background with maybe NBC and maybe some of the clients we might recognize that you've represented over the years. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I, I had a, a, a sort of a rough beginning myself because uh, I, uh, I was a lifeguard in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And after work, we used to take our, ro our rowboats out and we'd go swimming. And one day I took my boat out and I got on the bow of the boat and as the boat leapt up on the wave, I dove off onto a sandbar, and I broke my neck. My fifth and sixth vertebra were dislocated and broken. I was done. I mean, this is power paralysis from the neck down. I walked out of the ocean holding my head in my hands. Literally, I, I, I was holding it up. And some woman on the beach wanted to help me and sort of turn my neck around and get the kink out. And I said, no, no, I think maybe I should go to the hospital. So I got a ride to the hospital and wouldn't you know, they all came out of the x-ray room looking at me like I was not gonna be around very long. But anyway, I survived. But it wasn't without spending six, eight weeks on a striker frame bed where I couldn't move and I was suspended with hooks in my skull hanging there and nothing to do but to stare at the ceiling. So what was I going to do for eight weeks? Uh, at the prime of my life, I mean, I was 21, 21, 20 years old. I mean, 
This was unbelievable. But what I discovered were books. I started reading. I used prism glasses and I read books upside down. I would be staring at the ceiling and the books would be on my chest and I'd be able to read them. And I read the complete works of George Bernard Shaw and major authors, St. John, Devil's Disciple, all the wonderful stories. And I got hooked myself on reading and writing. And eventually that led me to college, to universities, to master degrees, masters at the University of Pennsylvania and all that, Annenberg School, and, and a job as a, uh, a reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer. That's where I really started to write. And I wrote many of the front page stories in, in the newspaper, the, the Philadelphia Inquirer. And, and I took those skills with me into public relations. And that's how a lot of people come to me because they read something I've written, they read my blog at maddenmischief.com, or they read one of my books, or they've heard about me, and they come to me to guide them in their own careers. Okay, and you, nowadays you still, you're still publishing and writing books. I certainly am. I, uh, my latest book <clears throat> is a book called Word Shine Man. Can, can you see it okay? Yep. And Word Shine Man is my fifth book, and it's, it's really all about how to make your writing inviting. It's, you know, uh, I, I, I am the word polisher at my PR firm, besides being the CEO, I'm the word polisher. So, I mean, just like the guys that used to shine shoes, I shine words. I try to make words and sentences and come to life. I give them strong verbs and I, and I put the meat of the writing high up because if you don't catch somebody's attention at the very beginning on those subject lines and emails, you don't have a chance. And a lot of young people today, they're bright, they're quick, their thumbs are a mile a minute on their cell phones, but they don't have the experience of laying out a lot of information in a, in a page or two. And start with the most compelling arresting information at the very beginning to catch interest and i teach them how to do that they send me something in writing a press release or something and i polish it i'm the word polisher the word shine man so and i show them how they can take the same information but turn things around change a word here and there and make it much more attractive and arrest attention because that's what we have to do in this world. We all have the difficulty of getting the attention of others. And that's where writing can play a big role. That's what I've noticed since you've uh, been assisting me with your press releases. You're just incredibly well written and we're getting massive responses and interview requests as a result of those. And so I've been always grateful for that and, you know, more so for your friendship. But I will say that, uh, you know, I took college course in, in prison and you actually paid for one of them. So. You put your money where your mouth is, and I was destitute in prison with nobody out there to, to give a damn about me or my story. And Tom has a heart of gold. I became a prayer partner with your wife uh, at the time, Angela, um, who was uh, suffering with cancer. And so I became friendly with her, and I became friendly with you. And for some reason, you took an interest in me, and it really has made a, a difference. And I'm so proud, and I'm so happy that we we did make a difference because Bill has got talent, he's got resourcefulness, he's got intelligence, he has all the things that you want uh, in someone to, to work for you, with you, for you. And I, I think the world of Bill, and I think everyone who meets him recognizes this spark that he has. And uh, I think I see big things happening for Bill uh, besides the the TV series that he's in and, and all the interviews he does and, and, and the books that he's written so far, they command a lot of attention because they're very insightful books about others with problems. Uh, you know, like Ghislaine Maxwell and others and Robert Durst, the guy he hung around with years ago and, and really got to understand the inside of what makes this evil man tick. and. Uh, 
and he brought a lot of that to light. So we're, we're thankful for a guy like uh, William Steele. Uh, we hope there are more of them, and my, my fear is that there are many of them still incarcerated. They've already changed, and yet they're still there. And we have to recognize that, and we have to give people the ability to change their lives, just as Bill is doing. So that's why he is inspiring. Well, thank you for that, Tom. It, it's made a huge difference in my life, your friendship, and uh, uh, my co-author, Gary Greenberg, uh, he was editor of the Crime Writer with the National Enquirer, many of the publications, AARP, uh, Life Extension Magazine, he continues to edit for the Enquirer. And then the phenomenal, when I thought I was going to die from COVID in prison just before my release, who did you introduce me to to try to help me get out of prison? Ah, yes. A little sooner. And I was so happy to introduce you to your loved one now. She's, she's a great asset to your life. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I think the two of you are a perfect team. So my, my, uh, my hat's off to you, both of you. I see big things ahead. Right. Yeah, so Tom's also a, a matchmaker by accident, but uh, my beautiful fiance, Dr. Mary Bass, as you know, she's come on the air with me before as a, a crime fighter and a crime victim advocate herself. We've all been victimized by crime, and now we can relate to people that are going through something. And so Tom actually took her call when she was looking for representation for an innocent incarcerated client in California, and he introduced us, and now we're engaged. And so on top of that, besides introducing me to my fiance, um, my now fiance, he also arranged for me to get an attorney, one of the top attorneys in the country, a gentleman and a scholar, and I don't say that lightly, a, a, a wonderful human being named Peter Tickton. Tickton uh, is a, just a wonderful guy, and he's quickly become a friend and mentor to me as well. He gives me tons of good advice before and after my release from prison, tried to get me released early, and he's been a real blessing to know as a friend, and I'm happy to help uh, mention his his uh, projects on my on my interviews because he's been such a blessing and he's a really good good guy. If you need a great attorney, I'd say hire Peter Tickton. Well, incredibly, Peter Tickton put out a book about his time with President Donald Trump. They went to the same military academy. In fact, Trump was his captain during his time at the military academy. And he also represents Donald Trump in some lit uh, litigation against um, Hillary Clinton and some top Democrats for basically frustrating the Trump presidency by, you know, by in inappropriate means when Trump was in office and even, you know, leading up to the elections. So I probably would have Peter on here at a later date and he can explain more of that and what the, what the nexus of that lawsuit is. But he's personal friends still with Donald Trump. I'm proud to call him a friend, a mentor, and, and still my attorney. And so, Tom, if you want to tell us how you came to know Peter, and um, if you want to show the book that you have in front of you there, it's uh, Peter's. Peter, uh, you know, it's, it's such a privilege uh, to have clients who are, uh, you know, truly uh, the best in their fields. And of course, Peter Tickton. Uh, he is an amazing uh, attorney. He knows the law and he practices the law and he has ch achieved so many things in the law. Uh, you ever want a, an attorney who is really going to go to bat for you, uh, he's the guy and he's amazing. <clears throat> he and, and, and he's been a lifelong friend of, Peter, of, of, of our former president, Donald Trump. And they, as, as Bill said, they they went to the uh, New York Military Academy together, and uh, Trump was uh, Peter's commanding officer. And they've stayed friends lifelong. And uh, now, Peter is Trump's personal attorney, and he is handling some very sensitive uh, matters for for his friend Donald Trump. And he couldn't be happier because he believes so much in Trump and believe said he's gonna help save America by getting Trump back into power again. And that's how fiercely he advocates for his lifetime friend, and now his personal, his client, Donald Trump. Here's his book, What Makes Trump Tick? And if you wanna know about Donald Trump, I mean, there are pros and cons uh, of Donald Trump. 
people who will follow him into fire and others who have nothing to do with him, but no one really has the true story about Donald Trump as Tickton does. So if you want to know what makes Trump tick, you'll read what makes Trump tick. Okay. Well, I, I just want to add this if you're comfortable talking about your, uh, you know, you came a long way. You were married to Angela for many years and lost her in tragic circumstances. And I know that, you know, later in life, for myself included, you know, when I didn't think I'd ever find love again coming out of incarceration, I know you found it as well. And uh, do you want to share how that happened? And I know you wrote a book about that experience. I did write it. <clears throat> the book is titled Love Boat. And... I was on a, on a boat, uh, losing my, my wife, uh, to whom I was married uh, 34, uh, 54 years, 54 years, and I was very happy with Angela, and, but the last 10 years of her life were, were really hard, and especially the last few years of her life were awful. She suffered greatly, and, and now she's in heaven, and I pray she's safe and happy and, and rewarded for all her suffering. But I really fell apart uh, losing a wife that I was with that long. And I, I didn't know what to do and I, I just couldn't stand being alone. Uh, and I wasn't used to being alone. Well, you know, when you're married that long, uh, you know, when you're suddenly alone, it's, it's, it's so disorienting and, uh, and so people suggested to me why don't you go on these dating services and meet other women and, you know at least get friendly and go out again and just don't stay home and mope and, and I okay let, let me let me try that because I was kind of desperate I mean I was so unhappy and so low so lonely so I joined all these dating services and these crazy services and I would be meeting these women from all over the world I mean uh, you know, I look like an older guy with a, with a few dollars in the bank, and uh, you'd be surprised. The women wanted to fly in from all kinds of remote places just to go out with me. I, I, you know, I was suddenly very popular. But then I started to realize that, you know, uh, you know, a lot of these women were just looking to escape where, from where they were, and they saw an opportunity for somebody who maybe could help them uh, live a better life. So I went through all that dating craziness, and then one day I, I was having lunch in a, in a local bar, uh, and uh, <coughs> it's a place called Duffy's, a very popular place down here in South Florida. And I go in, uh, having lunch with a client, and I notice on the other side of the bar there was this very attractive blonde, uh, and I, I she really caught my eye. And I, I couldn't help, you know, sort of toasting her and saying hello across the bar. And she was so sure and smiling back. So I walked around to her and introduced myself and started to talk to her. And I, and I got her phone number. And that was it. Then it started. I took her out the next night and so forth. And, you know, so all this all these dating services and look, talking and women around the world and text and emails and all that and here in the local bar I find the love of my life and Rita who is from Brazil and I we married and we've been married the last three years and uh, she's the most wonderful wife and I'm blessed to have Rita so it is a happy ending and uh, some of the best things are right in front of you, right nearby. So all, all those who think they have to go searching the world for happiness, sometimes it's right there in front of you. So you just have to look for it and then seize upon it, as I did. And now I'm very happy, Rita and I. Well, that's a fascinating story, Tom, and I'm glad you found love again and uh as did i thanks to you <laughs> and uh, i never thought i could be so loved as i am now by mary so 
I couldn't be happier. And um, well, you you lucked out that. with Mary because she's an extraordinary woman herself, and she's been through a lot, <clears throat> and yet she still maintains her poise, her beauty, uh, and her cheerfulness, and uh, she's like a rock, and you really got yourself a wonderful woman there. And uh, and just like my, my wife is from Brazil, she is from Romania, and a fascinating woman, and a very intelligent, she's a PhD, and all of that, so I think we both lucked out. Let, let me just correct you on one thing. Cut. We're gonna edit, we're gonna edit this. Yeah. She, she's not from Romania. Where's she from? She's born in California, but she has dual citizenship in Canada and the United States. And her background is Italian, Middle Eastern, and I'll wait for her to tell you. She'll be back in. I thought the, you told me Romanian. The Romanian part came in because she was living with Romanians for many years and learned. She speaks it fluently. So she speaks many languages. And so she learned it fluently, but after she had a stroke, for some reason she could only think in Romanian. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, she could only think in Romanian. I just assumed Romanian. she was from Romania. No. <laughs> it's not her native language. All right, well, but, you straighten that out. But yeah, so uh, <laughs> we were going to talk to you about that. <laughs> no, but that's a good story, too. All right, let's, let's just finish this up real quick, wrap this up. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so we're continuing on. All right, Tom, I, you know, thank you so much for having us and your hospitality. And, you know, we're over here in Boca Raton using your pool and your oceanfront, and it's beautiful, um, hosting us in your condo to allow us to uh, film a show. And we're very grateful. We're proud to have to know you and, and met Rita. And so thank you very much and for being on this so that everybody who's my fans and my early fans especially, I have, I have followers now before the show for my books that are really in touch all the time and really – care about me rebuilding my life uh, after incarceration and uh, I, I want to you know have them support you as well and uh, you know please support Tom Tom's uh, doing well but you know it doesn't hurt to get uh, his story and his books out there because you know what they're an encouragement to other people and we're just so grateful to uh, know a guy we're just completely blessed he's an answer to prayer again he came into my life during incarceration and when I was at my most miserable most wor you know worst and just thought there was nothing, you know, much going forward when I came out. It would be really difficult. But uh, between him and Gary and Peter, they helped me get my projects launched and going even be just before I got out. So thank you for being on, Tom. Hopefully, we'll do some more of these in the coming in the coming uh, weeks and months ahead. And we look forward to uh, having you watch the premiere of my t new TV show, Inmate to Roommate, on A and E Network. Uh, premiere for the series. It's a reality show. It premieres. On A and E at ten o'clock at night, which is prime time, I'm still overwhelmed and, and I can't think I'm talking about somebody else. But it shows that recidivism is very high in the United States, and much of that is tied to offenders coming out from prison having nowhere to go upon upon release. And in my case, I had a falling out with family, as you know, so I we went to live with a pen pal in Indiana. So this show really focuses on the struggle of getting on your feet post-incarceration, who's in your life to help you, who's allowing you to live with them temporarily. And I can't give away much more than that, but I look forward to you watching it with everybody and we'll spread the word together. Thanks again, Tom. Okay, my pleasure. <laughs> All right. This is William Steele. Thank you for joining us. Please hit like and subscribe to join us for new true crime videos, victim advocacy, and advocating for the wrongfully incarcerated. Please join me on A&E Network Inmate to Roommate Breakout Reality Show. Thank you.